This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, ready to talk uh, on the show where we talk with uh, people in and around independent professional wrestling. A lot of them here in Pittsburgh, but of course we do get a lot of recommendations and uh, we got somebody definitely in and out of town. I'm really looking for- forward to this conversation today. And of course you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and IndieWrestling.us. We contribute the Indie Mayhem Show to that as well. And uh, you can subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show and Facebook page. And of course, the live stream uh, it tends to pop up over on the IndieWrestling.us Facebook page, and of course, shared with Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook as well. Keep an eye on the events over on both of those Facebook pages. You, you'll see who's coming up, uh, so you'll know the, the times we do these kind of in batches and different times, and you never know who's going to pop up, and uh, you never know who what surprise uh, interviews we might uh, have in here in the studio on the line. Who knows? And of course, you can drop us a recommendation at Indie Mayhem at SorgatronMedia.com or 412-206-WMS0 or at Mayhem Show on Twitter, which is exactly how we got our guest this week because uh, our friends at Team Hammerfist actually just suggested, I believe the tweet read something on the line of you guys must have him on your show. I wow. looked at the Twitter account and uh, and in about you know three tweets, I think I messaged uh, our guest for today. He is the weapon of SAS destruction and uh, the corporate sponsored Effie joining us here on the show today. Thank you for joining us, sir. What a wonderful introduction. Thank you for having me. This uh, is fun. So I want to get into, the, the, like I said, there's, there's, a, there's so much to get into around Effie. Really, I, I want to go, what is Effie? What, you know, what's, what, what's the deal with this? You have uh, the most um, in-depth website I think I've seen a pro wrestler have in the last five years. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But first, we'd like a little bit of icebreaker for those that maybe don't know Effie in general. What is your earliest memory of uh, professional wrestling? Oh, earliest memory of professional wrestling is uh, my dad taking me to see Ric Flair have a title match. I'm going to show my age. This was in 2003. This is there's like video memories before that, but this is the like real early memory. And we had gone earlier that day to one of the Sprint store signings because I wanted to meet Ric Flair, and uh, he got pulled away from the table. And there was like two people in front of me, um, and they replaced him with the heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels. And so I got my Shawn Michaels shirt signed because I won it at the little radio booth while I was there, which was convenient. So now I actually have a quilt my mother made with my signed Shawn Michaels shirt on it. And I went that night with my dad, and we watched Ric Flair lose to Triple H in Greenville, South Carolina, the World Heavyweight Championship, and I was on the edge of my seat. And it was incredible. That's amazing. That's amazing. So so it, it, it's something that kind of captured on you right away, right? Yeah, and I think, um, you know, my one thing I brought up before is there was always this thought in my mind of like, all right, well, I'm this little kid. I'm eating my Funyuns. I'm watching SmackDown. I got UPN because that's the channel that came through. I didn't have cable. And there was never a thought of like, you could actually be a wrestler. You could actually do this. It was just like, man, they must make these dudes in a factory. Um, and they just get pumped out. And that's how it happens. Just watch it. You'll enjoy yourself. So it wasn't until a little later on that I started saying, you know what? I might be able to slip in and do this. Mm-hmm. So and uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead with uh, so so. How did how did you kind of discover like that? This is something that like you can actually get involved in. Here's the real story. This is the true actual story. So I did a lot of drugs. I was drinking a lot. <laughs> okay. And I went to an NXT show, and my car wouldn't start. And this guy came up to me, and he said, "I can start your car." And then he handed me an eight by ten. And his name was White Trash Fred. And he said, if you ever want to train, I will train you how to be a wrestler. And I was like, all right, pipe dreams. Well, I took about eight hits of LSD one time, ended up in the hospital, got completely sober and made the phone call because I was bored as hell. I wasn't doing drugs anymore. So Mm -hmm. I called White Trash Fred. And for the next eight months of my life, I drove out about an hour and a half every Sunday. And I learned as much as I could. And then I said, you know what? 
going to start getting booked because I saw some of the guys that were getting booked and they shouldn't have even been booked. So there's really no excuse not to book me. And I just kind of worked my way in there. Mm-hmm. So it's, if from that, like, you, you know, uh, uh, did the, the Effie kind of persona kind of come out right away or was there kind of a development uh, uh, to where you're at right now? It was kind of a day one thing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, like it was, I was 23 at the time. I'm figuring out my own sexuality. I've been this weird, you know, kind of semi closeted, overly sexual person for a long time doing whatever with whoever. And I knew that I could get heel heat immediately, especially at these smaller shows Mm -hmm. by just being this overtly kind of feminine thing. And obviously there's a trend of that previously in independent and mainstream professional wrestling with your gold dust, with your exoticos in Mexico, uh, with your Adrian streets, that sort of thing. But, you know, I was trying to, I was trying to make it to where they couldn't make the assumption. Um, I would tell them you can't assume with me, but as I sort of grew into it, um, my personality is kind of just turned into what it is now, which is just a big out of the closet kind of ass, um, mm-hmm. who's critical of everything, who's way too sassy of everything and who doesn't hesitate to, um, call out some BS when he sees it. So it's sort of, it has layers, man. Effie has layers. I'm like a trifle. Effie is a trifle, mm-hmm. right? There's the surface, which is I'm pissing off rednecks because I'm too gay. Then there's a little lower, which is, uh, oh, you're sponsored by Collar and Elbow and Strong Style because they gave you free shipping on a shirt and a 10% discount code. Well, I'm sponsored by Clorox and Planned Parenthood. So take your sponsorships elsewhere. We're going deeper, right? And then I really am corporate sponsored. I make a lot of money during the day when I'm not wrestling. And I can fund enough of the websites and the merchandising and everything else to build my brand Mm -hmm. to where I am the most marketable because I have the cleanest designs. I have the best websites. I have the best video production. Um, And then even deeper than that, you know, I might have a demonic element to me for people who've seen me live. I'm always trying to lead people maybe to the wrong side of the tracks. And um, through joy and happiness and beauty and fun, uh, they find out that they can have uh, everything they want. If they uh, give up their morals, uh, let's talk about a little bit of like the rea- reactions a bit, and, and I definitely want to get into the merch and everything mm-hmm. too. Um, and so, so you know, obviously, easy to get a reaction here in these uh, you know smaller towns with the rednecks and whatnot. You know, was there a little bit of a worry about that because that can get kind of serious when, especially those small towns like that, where where it's still pretty real to them. Oh yeah, and then you're bringing um, this kind of uh, cultural thing to them too. I kind of took pride in the fact that I could go in there and I could take the heat and there was heat and it Mm -hmm. wasn't heat like, Oh, this is a heel. This is heat. Like get him out of our building kind of heat. Yeah. And I realized, you know, not to sound too inspirational, but I would much rather that hate be coming at me as a six, one, 225 pound white male, you know, instead of someone else who maybe couldn't defend themselves as well. Mm -hmm. So if you want to call me names in the ring and come at me, not only could I probably shoot choke you out in a parking lot, but also, you know, I'm going to come back twice as hard with whatever I'm saying to you. And I'm going to leave you more uncomfortable. And people by the end of the show are going to go, man, he really held his own against, you know, whatever was coming his way. Um, I think one of the first times I did it, I told someone, they said something about, I was, I was so gay. I couldn't see straight. They were using slurs. And I said, honey, I look way too much like your Google search history to be talking this much trash. (laughs) The room just lost it on this guy. And by the end of my match, he was saying, this is awesome. And you kind of see this switch in people where they're like, Oh, maybe, maybe I was a little hateful and I didn't give it a chance. And now I'm impressed by what I'm actually seeing. So you've got to shut them up up front and show them you can hang with them. Cause the moment you give them that space and that room to have that power over you, they lose it. And hopefully there's people in the audience too. And I know there are, cause they've kind of come up to me and said, look, you know, I'm glad you can dish that heat out because I feel a lot more comfortable at a wrestling show. If I know that you're hearing what I'm hearing and I'm as offended by it as you are, and you're not putting up with it, you're not brushing it off. You're not saying shut up. You're really coming back at them with some knowledge and some facts. And, uh, thank God for RuPaul's drag race for teaching me how to read these boys. Absolutely. I've had conversations. Uh, we, we, we have some friends of the show have talked about, um, you know, this, 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 this uh, culture is not really represented too well in wrestling over the years. 
And uh, it has been interesting. We're seeing a lot of different, um, you know, guys like you, right, that are that are doing this and being out there at this. Well, and I think there's a few issues with it, and we'll get into this. So yeah, yeah. the first issue is, obviously, as a performer whose sexuality is out there in the open, because it's just who I am at this point. I'm not hiding anything, and I sexually express myself in the ring, and that's fun. Um, you have to ride a fine line between being able to work a match that's worthy of anyone watching and relying too much on gimmicky stuff. And sometimes I like to play with that idea. I did a match with Stevie Fierce uh, out of Chicago, and I said, let's start the match with the joke where I'm on all fours and I'm saying, come get it. And then let's shoot Greco Roman wrestle for a few minutes. So they're expecting this to turn into some joke and it starts out looking like one. And then all of a sudden we're having a real grappling match. And that's the comedy in itself is the switch. Um, but I see a lot of guys, unfortunately, who they rely a little heavily on, you know, oh, I'm gay. I'm going to do gay things. Yeah. So their whole match is sort of this predictable kind of choreographed, like I can't deal with this guy because he's too gay. And on the other side of that, I still see guys going out there, you know, doing gimmicks that are effeminate or gay. And these guys have, you know, wives at home and are as straight as an arrow. And that to me, you're riding a really kind of a risky line because you've got to be true to yourself or else you're just out there playing a game. Right. Which, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, I've been told by major United States promoters that I was acting too gay at points. And I was like, honey, I am too gay. What do you want me to do about it? You know, so there's that that idea almost that uh, these promoters have to make sure they're not bringing in guys who are just um, exaggerating a problem or a stereotype mm -hmm. and having to defend myself. I'm currently dating a man. If I wasn't dating a man, would that, you know, exonerate my sexuality or you know, do I have to defend the fact that this is real to me or is it something that, you know, they're just, I don't know, they're just having to hold their tongue on because they don't know whether or not it's real. We've come a long way since the days of the billion chucks and gold dust, which were, uh, you know, for the most part, we think, um, you know, acting the part, right? Yeah. And I mean, gold dust, I've said a hundred times is the anti John Cena for me. So John Cena is, I don't really want to watch his match, but I'd hang out with the dude all day. Mm -hmm. Gold dust. I love his matches, but I don't want to hang out with that dude. Cause he's sober. I know how sober people are. I'm a sober person. And if I have to hear about the 12 steps in the Lord, a hundred freaking times, instead of you just putting on the makeup and doing what you do, I don't want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about like, the merchandising. I'm looking at the website more and more here. I, I, I'm loving uh, looking at some of the videos. We showed a uh, piece of it um, uh, a little bit here and a little bit of your match. Uh, it looked like the dog dog collar match from uh, oh, yeah. Best Wrestling. And there was a little bit of that where you're doing a little of the dances. You're getting ready for it at the beginning, too. Absolutely. Well, here's the thing about the website. So my website currently, it's www.bfe.com. Once again, we're going to go into layers. Here's the layers. It looks like beefy. I'm a beefy boy, right? But if you go to beefy.com, it's just gay porn. <laughs> so don't so, mistype this. <laughs> right? But if you do, oops. Oops. What happened? Oh, you went to it. Now you have to look at it. I'm glad I so, didn't try doing this live on the air to type yeah. this thing in then. Uh, I'm glad we do cue this up in advance because <laughs> I, I, I definitely would have mistyped it. And then the second layer to that is, you know, beefy, but it's B F E. You need to be F E. You know, I'll admit I portray F E, but F E is me, you know? Mm. So if you can be a little more like me, a little more open minded, a little more sexual, a little more uh, out of the box, um, especially with the matches I see, which is the same eight indie spots over and over, I try not to do that. So be F E instead. Awesome. And then there's also a gallery, I believe, of just nipple pictures. Um, oh, yeah. That's under the Look at Elfie, Effie. I'm oh, sorry. Effie? Yeah, that would be Look at Effie. Yeah. I think there's just close-up shots of my crotch and nipples. Yeah. So that's all you need to see. Yep. Yep. There's there's your mouth that says, does this look like a toilet? Um, things like that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was told that was unprofessional, so I freaking kept it because you don't <laughs> tell me how to live my life. <laughs> It's good to be true to the true true to Effie, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, we're, I was poking a little bit through the uh, where are they at? By Effie, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you, this is for real. You have uh, it says uh, Effie perfume, a genderless fragrance from Effie. You ready to get into the details of this? Because this is real life. Here's what happened. 
this is my third genderless fragrance oh, and uh, current PWX and all over the U S and evolved superstar James Drake tried to shade me a little bit and say it was just water in a bottle. I said, honey, you have no idea. So last year around this time last year, I thought it would be silly to release a fragrance. So I went through the process of figuring out how to make perfume and I made a scent that would be masculine enough and feminine enough for anyone to wear. And I made two separate versions of it, and I sold 100 bottles in a month. Jeez. I sold 100 bottles of genderless fragrance in a month. And I told myself, I'll never do it again. I had to learn how to make perfume. I had to learn the oils, learn the scents, do the bottling, do the labeling. And, and John Cena is not making his tap out fragrance, right? Oh, I mean, hell no. <laughs> and neither is Mariah Carey. They bring her a smell and slap her name on it. Yeah. This is real life. And so then. I said, you know what? Enough people are asking about it. Let's do it again. I did another 50 bottles. I think I have six left in the car. They were released two weeks ago. So I put them at a higher price because I put more into it this time. I made the bottles nicer. I made the boxing and packaging nicer. Um, I think it smells really good. Um, but it's one of those things for me, if you really want to get into the college course that I'm going to be teaching in 10 years, uh, it's called Retro Future Marketing. So hear me out. You release a limited number of a product, the product obviously being genderless fragrance. Mm -hmm. Certain people buy the product. There are people who are going to buy Effie merchandise no matter what it is. That's a fact. I really love them for it, and I appreciate them stepping up all the time. Now, once that fragrance is sold out, once people have already been talking about the fragrance, once people are posting pictures about the fragrance, the fragrance is already gone. There's no more of it that exists. And when people ask about it at a later time, didn't that guy have his own fragrance? Yeah, he did. Let's talk about it. Now, a year later, post the fragrance, you're still talking about the fragrance and you can't get it, which makes it more desirable, which makes your interest in me more peaked. It's retro future marketing. And I think it's going to work. That's amazing. Actually, it already did work. <laughs> I had to do it again. <laughs> so that it was so it was like a retro, retro, retro future marketing at that point. We're taking it into the layers. We're becoming the trifle. <laughs> exactly. It's wonderful. Amazing. Um, so uh, you, you got the presentation here. I, it, again, I was watching your video. Uh, it was, again, the, you know, kind of your booking video, right? And you mm -hmm. talked about the effic effi excuse me, effication? Effication. It's effic not a convocation, but it's an effication. You can also use the word effify. Effify. There you go. Uh, explain to me this concept because I thought this was great because, you know, it was it was a little bit about like, hey, maybe you're worried about bringing somebody like me. Here's why you shouldn't be. Right. Exactly. Well, so I look at people's booking emails and booking videos and here's my highlight reel and everybody's vying for the same spots. Right. Yeah. So the effication is something that we started to notice. Me and my assistant, Jerome Champagne who also works for me full-time as a sales manager. Long story short, he's great. He's wonderful. He handles my merchandise. And most of my online media presence goes through him and me. Um, we said, look, here's what's happening. You get booked somewhere, right? And they, in the instance of fast wrestling, let's take that one. I got a five-minute spot with someone who has a checkered pass. So, and that was entrance to entrance, five-minute spot. Opening their first show, let's do it. So the reaction is really strong. And this happens at a lot of places. They see I'm taking care of my character. I'm coming in professionally. I have good gear. I have good merchandise. I'm easy to talk to. I'm fun to be around. And they want to bring me back. So they bring me back. Probably by the third or fourth booking, I'm high mid card. Um, maybe by the fourth or fifth booking, I'm the main event. It happens. I don't know why exactly it happens. Besides, I put a lot of care into what I'm doing. So I'm not showing up. I'm not sloppy. I'm not worried about myself. I'm extremely confident in what I do. If I make mistakes, I own up to them. And um, I'm spending time actually learning and meeting and talking to people where I go into a lot of locker rooms now. Guys are quiet in the corner. Guys that are, guys that are interesting online are really, really boring in person. A lot of these indie hype folks are so boring to talk to. And I think by having – at least an interest in wrestling to where I can express it and talk to people and getting over nerves and being able to connect with audience members level that more than just moves because, you know, you don't want to be the guy who did the move because nobody remembers what the move they, they remember the move. They don't remember the guy is mm -hmm. what you commonly hear. Right. So having that connection, I end up getting brought back and brought back. So what I know is if you're a promotion that takes a risk on bringing me in and you don't have an idea what's going on or you've heard certain things, 
I know it's going to pay off for you because I've seen it happen time and time again. I'm going to come in. You can put me with anybody as bland as can be. I'm going to give them an interesting match. I'm going to get them over whether I win or lose. And you're going to do good business off of it. I've seen people come into shows that I've been booked on for the first time who said, we literally only came here for you. And that sounds so cocky to say. But when people are coming up to you, nine or ten people at a 60-person show, yeah, that's more people through the door just because you put me on the show. Yeah. Now, is is – is somebody you paid five hundred dollars? All right, let's say it's a big, big ending name. You paid them five hundred dollars to come in. That's a lot of your budget and talent. If we're getting down to the profit and loss statements here, are they saying, "Wow, this indie talent, I have to show up for this," or are they saying, "I already bought a ticket, but I'm glad he's there too"? If the case is, "I'm glad I bought a ticket, I was going to come anyway, I'm glad I got to see that person," then you're as a promoter, you as a promoter, just wasted five hundred dollars. That fan was going to show up anyway. What are you doing to bring in people to your promotion to pay more money to come to your promotion that are not already coming? And people are not realizing that, that a lot of these guys that are big names on the Internet, big Twitter names, big indie draws online that are on these big shows, they're not bringing in more people than who were actually going to show up. I think I can bring in more people because I have a diverse fan base. I have people who typically wouldn't even come to wrestling who are just intrigued by the weird videos and stuff I'm doing. And I offer a product that's different than everyone else's. You can say I could fit into a category with maybe, you know, other gay wrestlers or other things like that. But I promise you, you could take off my fishnets. You can take the flashy jackets. You can take everything else away. I'm still going to provide you a very interesting product because I care about what I'm putting out and I'm not repeating myself. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing as stand-up comedy. There's a guy who can go do an hour set a hundred nights a week. That's the same hour set. But if you've seen the set, what are you going to come back for in the next month? You've seen everything he does. He does the same thing every time. So constant experimentation with my character and what I'm doing obviously led me to this point and is going to continue to lead me to whatever I become. Was that a mouthful? It, a, l- a little bit, but that was that, that was almost a college course in, in marketing yourself right there. So hey, I'm I'm trying to get those college uh, college <laughs> courses lined up. I've got some information to spill. There you go. Second, third career already lined up. Um, <laughs> and and that's really important because I know we you know we we talk a lot with the wrestlers here locally that it's hard to get them to be on a Twitter, Instagram, like even just putting themselves out there on the social media that exists just as them as a wrestler, right? Um, you know, do you have any advice for um, new wrestlers that are trying to kind of figure out how to put them out themselves out there like that, like in, in a manner like you are? Yeah, I think you really, this sounds, this sounds kind of silly from the outside, but one of the best pieces of business advice I ever got was you are seeing the world through your own eyes, right? And that's kind of a limitation because you're only seeing what you're seeing. You have to go above yourself and kind of look from the sky and be completely self-aware. I am completely self-aware. I know when I need to look goofy. I know when I need to come off as an asshole. I know when I need to do certain things. And being that self-aware, I can make myself the butt of the joke. I can be a serious competitor. I know how to put myself out there because I know my character so well. So if your character is, I'm a badass, you better be a badass. Mm -hmm. If your character is, I'm a high flyer, you better be a high flyer. But as far as an internet presence goes, how is that going to translate? Is it going to be a lot of pun jokes about how you're flying? Is it going to be constant updates about people you're actually beating up in real life because you really are a badass? When you say you're a badass and then I see a cell phone promo of you in front of an apartment complex, you're not a badass. You're a guy who works part-time somewhere standing in front of an apartment complex pretending to be someone. How do you disappear the line between pretending to be someone and having that character come across completely real? And I spend a lot of money on video promotion, but you really don't have to. There are ways with phones now, with video editing programs, with software, with all that kind of stuff that's already in your phone to where it doesn't have to look like crappy cell phone videos. And if you're taking the time to set your lighting, to make sure you're centered, to make sure you've got your camera set up correctly, um, you're going to be able to put that presence out there in a way more professional manner. It's almost like a part of the the getting through wrestling school should be a minimal video production, you know, kind of tutorial, right? I think so. Yeah. I did I did an evolve tryout last year, which went. I'll say, for Gabe, it went terribly because he hated me. Uh, for me, it went excellent <laughs> because William Regal shook my hand and told me I was very entertaining. So, 
But during that time, they do have Stokely Hathaway, who people may be familiar with, kind of giving tips on social media. And I realized when I was sitting there, when I was the only one asking questions about you know real social media, that people have no clue what they're doing. And people are asking questions along the lines of, how often should I update? All the freaking time is how often you should update. If you don't have anything to say, find something to say. Mm-hmm. If you're not on the forefront of what people are thinking, then – they're not going to be thinking about you at all and promote the shows. Don't just promote the shows by sharing the poster, make the post interesting, do something weird with it. I mean, there's, there's no limitations to how you can promote a show. And if you're talking and doing a promo, don't cut the same promo as everyone else. I joke in the locker room with guys and do the same promo, which is easy. I'm going to do it real quick. <clears throat> this time you've made it personal and you've crossed the line. So at event, On date, this Saturday night, you're going to have to step in the ring with me and you're going to have to put your title on the line because people know that once you cross, once you cross me, there's no coming back. So name of opponent, you better be completely ready because I'm coming in and I'm ready to kill. Everybody's cut that promo. Every single person. It seemed to start as a Triple H impression. Is that, is that by accident? Oh, no. Have you been to an independent wrestling show? Everything is a <laughs> yeah, Triple yeah. H impression. That is true. Everybody's trying to be... Everybody puts yeah. their tough guy voice on, which I'm the opposite. I know I'm tough. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with knowing I'm tough. I don't need to come off as tough as my character. When I get in the ring, I can be tough, right? When I snap my lid, I can be tough. But if I'm trying to get a little heel heat, I wouldn't want to come off as tough. Mm-hmm. I would want you to go... This asshole needs to stop talking like this. This dude is talking out of his head. This dude isn't going to get anywhere. There's no way this dude's going to beat anybody. Absolutely. And then I do, you know? Awesome. Well, um, what are you watching these days? Is there anything that you're kind of watching for inspiration or anybody that's kind of caught your attention out there? Um, yeah, I mean, I watch a lot of independent stuff. And I sit behind the scenes on a lot of shows, too, so yeah. I'm just watching stuff. Um, one person who I literally cannot take my eyes off and I will not stop talking about him is a guy named Saif Al Sabah and Saif Al Sabah if you don't know him he's been doing some stuff with uh, MLW Major League Wrestling um this past weekend I'll give you his travel schedule he went from uh let's see Friday he was in Dayton Ohio he showed up got to be a part of the Rockstar Scramble uh Saturday drove back to Miami Florida was in the Ronin Pro Wrestling uh triple threat And then Sunday was in Charlotte for PWX. The guy does not stop. And I don't think work, you know, work horsemanship is, is the maker of a competitor. But when you watch this dude work, he is the most charismatic, aware character in wrestling. And he's incredible. I can't stop talking about it. You really, if you need me to spell it, it's, uh, S I S A I V E and then a space and then A L and then a space, and then S-A-B-A-H. Thank you. Yeah, I was trying to look them up here, and I was yeah. trying to go to PWX. PD, PD, it's, it's something you kind of have to just like experience in person because yeah. I've never seen somebody own a room with that much swagger. The guy knows what he's doing, and I will not stop bragging on him because I can't stop like just watching him wrestle. Awesome. It's phenomenal. Awesome. So uh, what is the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling for you? So I will plug, I do have a little series I've been doing that only has three parts so far and it's called talk and shoot with Effie. And I don't know if you've had a chance to watch any of this yep. yet. Yeah. We've been, we've been pulling up a little bit in the background here while you've been chatting. I, uh, I started doing this because people were like, you complain a lot about stuff in indie wrestling. And the reason I complain so much about indie wrestling is because I really, I really love pro wrestling. I love pro wrestling so much. But I hate when people ruin pro wrestling. There's so much stuff, especially with the internet, of people just ruining pro wrestling. I mean, examples I've brought up before are Make-A-Wish merch, which is just like the worst merchandise you've ever seen. Homemade crap. T-shirts that should have never been made. And they're like, well, I sold a few of them. And I'm like, because it's Make-A-Wish merch. They're donating to your little charity. They don't want the actual piece of merchandise. They just want to say they helped you and they helped you along. And really, they probably give you the $15 if they didn't have to take the shirt anyway. Um, another thing I complain about is guys pretending to be AJ Styles. And really, it's a bigger problem of guys just pretending whatever's hot for the week, they're going to do that. So, you know, Ricochet's hot, we're all Ricochet. AJ Styles is hot, we're all AJ Styles. Kevin Steen is hot. Oh, I'm Tubby and I like Kevin Steen. Let me start telling people I work a Kevin Steen style. 
I hear that all the damn time. Oh, I work more of a Kevin Steen style. No, nah, dude, you don't work a Kevin Steen style. You're just tubby and you want to wear a T-shirt. So, I mean, there's a lot of things I complain about in there. Training videos being posted online. I'm sorry. You know, I break kayfabe a lot, but I don't need to see the moves you and your little bro are practicing all the time. And then this weekend, you're now hated, heated competitors. Oh, cool. And you guys just posted your selfie in the car together. Here we are. We're going to the show together. And you're the opponents that night. People look at that. And it's just trashy. You're sitting there with your opponent. And now you're going to try to convince people, oh, we actually hate each other. We're enemies in this match. But you guys know because it's wrestling. It's just insulting. We know wrestling is predetermined or fictional or fake or whatever you want to call it. But you don't have to rub it in to the fact that, like, me and my bro are out here living our dreams yeah, we freaking know it. Go live your dreams, but keep that part off the internet. Nobody needs to see you botch another Rana. Great. Am so, I too real? So, so, so that is the best and the worst. <laughs> it's, it's all of it. It's me constantly going, this is trash. I wish it was better. And, oh, my God, I love this so much. It's like I'm in the, the worst abusive relationship with wrestling possible. Aren't we all? Um <laughs> So some more than others. So tell me, where can people uh, again? Where can people find you online? Uh, and uh, kind of generally, where do you show up in case people uh, check this interview out later on? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I am currently the Fast Wrestling champion. I just beat Sue Young, so you can find me at Fast Wrestling. I'm doing uh, a lot of Southern dates because I like the South. So I've got PWX coming up in March. I've got Southern Fried Championship Wrestling coming up in March. I'll be in Alabama for the New South Hoss Tournament in March. Uh, and then, you know, I'm working a show in a church this Saturday night, DCCW, because what's better in a church than this big queer boy? <laughs> um, Amazing. So my social media, I'm also really like controlling about it. My Twitter is free form thought all the time. Today, I posted a picture of me as dead Billy Graham holding his daughter's hand. But his daughter was a drag queen and I was Billy Graham. And it said, daddy is a homo. I don't care on Twitter. I go wild on Twitter and I will go in on some things. Uh, Facebook is a little more, hey, I'm promoting the show. Here's a video. This is fun. Uh, and Instagram is extremely tightly controlled personal information, and I make sure I only share what I can there. Instagram and Twitter are kill Effie because everybody's trying to. And Facebook is now just listed under Effie. I think if you do Facebook.com slash Effie Gibbs, it'll still show up. Yes. Uh, but it is listed just as Effie. And then to get to my YouTube, you just go to tinyurl.com slash watch Effie. And that's how you can get to that page. And I'll tell people, if they haven't seen me before, there's no one in wrestling making weirder videos than me than maybe Joey Janela on a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just put out that 8-bit thing. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> Listen, I all hail Joey Janela for doing something different because yeah. a lot of people in wrestling can't handle it. And I love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this was a great conversation. I think hopefully very educational for any of the young guys out so. there. So, and uh, hopefully we see you up here in the Pittsburgh area. I know I'm going to be circling in the video around of the promoters around here, and hopefully uh, one of them will bring you up. Dude, thank you. Hopefully sooner rather than later. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me, man. No, thanks a lot. And, and thanks again to Team Hammerfist for, uh, for recommending you as a, as a guest on the show. Again, we're I'm always... Also, yeah. I'm, I'm currently the Team Hammerfist internet champion. Right now. <laughs> I should probably take that belt out of my car. So that I can get some photos made with it. Shout there out to go. Team Hammerfist. Sorry, I have not done photos yet. There you go. Uh, and again, you guys, please, if there's anybody we're missing, I know we get a lot of Pittsburgh and uh, uh, Cleveland uh, kind of area guys here, but hey, it's what we're around. Uh, look, always looking to get other people from other areas doing really cool and interesting things on the indies and having these great conversations. Check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and please support uh, the indie wrestling that we have going on at IndieWrestling.us. And uh, until next time, support Effie. And support indie wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.